Me to Baltimore. It's the sixth leg of yachting's round the world Volvo Ocean Race. We hit the high seas in an hour. But before that, we're on solid ground and four wheels. From Alton Park, it's the British Touring Cars. The Green Flag British Touring Car Championship, sponsored by Green Flag Motoring Assistance. Dedicated to getting to you faster. on the British Touring So Vauxhall started where they left off, at the front, and the best of the rest aren't too far behind. MG and Peugeot had some good results, and the production class is as competitive as ever. For rounds three and four, we've come to Alton Park in Cheshire. It's a track that's a bit like your favourite back road in the countryside. And we've got two races to deal with, the sprint race to start things off, they start from a standing start for that one, and it's a blast all the way to the chequered flag. Later in the day, the feature race, they'll have a rolling start for that one, and they must make a pit stop during that race to change two tyres. Two different races, but both score the same towards the championship. Another bulging grid and some more new faces. The faces indeed of the pop group Atomic Kitten, who are backing a pair of bright yellow MGs in the touring independence class. The girls have caused quite a sensation here in the pit lane at Alton Park, the drivers Colin Turkington and Gareth Howe are focused on their own goals. What are your realistic chances this year? Um, well, the aim for the year, the aim for the team is to win the Independence Cup, um, so MMG can try and sweep the board. Um, obviously, it's going to be we're at a disadvantage from the off, not being at Brands, but um, no, I mean, hopefully we can get consistent finishes. I mean, the car's a, a proven good car, um, it's reliable, and hopefully that'll work in our favour. Um, this weekend, we'd, we just hope to pick up points and finish. You know, we'd, if we could both get two top six finishes, that'd be fantastic. Um, and just, just accumulate points to the Independence, really. And are you an Atomic Kitten fan? Yes, uh, of course. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> I'm on a motor circuit. <laughs> Driver Paul O'Neill has his own celebrity support in the shape of his sister, former Spice Girl Mel C. We're probably more used to seeing you singing than the supporting a racing track. What's it like having your brother race? It's really exciting, but it's terrifying at the same time. You know, it's. It's so difficult to watch him, but I'm really proud of him. He's doing so well. So it's good fun. It's always a good day out as well. A good day out for the motorsport fans based in the northwest and for many who travelled from further afield. Joining me in the commentary box this week is Will Hoy, former champion of the British Touring Cars. Will, talk us around this 2.4 mile track. Overdrive. So the first corner is Old Hall, taking in fourth gear. It's one of the most difficult corners on the track. It's got a very late apex. It's only got one line through there, really, and a big rough curb on the inside. And then we run down the avenue towards Cascades, a really plunging left-hander, great corner to drive. But just as you turn in, just here, there's a crest in the road, and it really unsettles the car. But look at those curves. They've got cow pats on them, as they're called, and they really unsettle the car, both on the inside and the outside of the corner. And then we run down beside the lake. A touring car ended up in that lake a few years ago. Then to Island Bend, the slowest corner on the circuit. It's taken in first gear. It's very difficult. It's a long radius corner. But what you need to do is get the traction right coming out because it takes you up hilltop, up this long straight, which leads us into the worst corner on any circuit in the country. It's called Nicker Brook. It's a real horror. 
see those curves, big, big curves and tyres to stop you taking too much curve. But you've got to get out of there quickly because it takes you up Clay Hill, this long climb. And this track here is very undulating and the car is thrown over to the right before you have to get the car over to the left, onto the brakes, before you go to Druids, the most daunting corner on the circuit. A double apex right-hander, it's blind. There's a dip in the middle, there is a crest. So it really unsettles the car. Important though for overtaking, because the next corner is Lodge Corner. It's slow, it's in second gear. But as you turn in, watch as the corner just disappears from underneath you as you fall into Deer's Leap. Just there, the car scrabbles for grip as it gets lots of understeer before switching left as we head for the start-finish line at about 125 miles an hour. Well, that's the look at this Alton Park track, one of the driver's favourites. And dry conditions greeted the drivers for both qualifying sessions. It proved to be a good day for the winner of round one at Browns Hatch, as Matt Neal took pole position for both races in his export Vauxhall Astra. That means he's gained two extra points in the championship, and thereby he takes a clear series lead over Ivan Muller. Two poles, Mr Neal. You must be a very happy boy. Just a bit. Yeah, it's... Um... A tad unexpected, I can say that. I didn't expect that this morning. James Thompson had to carry a whopping 42 kilos of ballast after his win in the second race at Brands, but managed to qualify second and fifth. Problems with the transmission for both him and teammate Ivan Muller meant a busy time for the Vauxhall Motorsport mechanics, but Muller still managed to qualify third for the sprint and second for the feature. MG put in another strong showing with a car on the second row for each race. Warren Hughes was third fastest for the second race in an all-new car. It's the first time we've been here, so we didn't race here last year um, at all. So it's, it's, you know, we were a bit concerned that we didn't have enough information going into this weekend. But um, MG and WSR have done just a, a mega job to get to get us as prepared as we are. There was less luck for 18-year-old Lancashire lad Tom Boardman. A big crash at one of the fastest corners put him out of action for both races. At the exit of Druids, my back end just touched the grass a little bit, and then when that happened, it's just flicked me around, and I've not been able to control it because the barriers at Alton Park are so close to each other that you've got no room, and once you're off, you're dead. Obviously not Tom Boardman's weekend. He took on a barrier and lost. Stay with us to see the rest of the Alton Park story unfold. Welcome back to Alton Park in Cheshire for round three of the 2002 Green Flag MSA British Touring Car Championship. And another chance to see how the revised system of adding ballast to a winning car helps to make the action even more exciting. The winner of the previous race has to add 42 kilos of ballast. The amount depends on where you finish, and if you were ninth or lower last time out, you can remove 24 kilograms. In practical terms, and for those of us who haven't got to grip with the metric conversion, 42 kilograms is about the same weight as, as Joe, but as it's considered dangerous to carry small children when you're racing, lead is used instead. James, you're carrying the maximum handicap of 42 kilograms. Where do you pack it all? <laughs> obviously, we've got to carry in the uh, in the car this uh, this this weekend because of the uh, obviously success ballast from winning the the last race. It's, it's a real handicap, particularly at a circuit like this with so many uh, braking and acceleration points. Um, so really it wasn't, wasn't ideal, it would have been quite nice, even though it was great to win that, uh, that race last weekend. It's a real penalty for the whole weekend here because you have to qualify with the ballast, practice with the ballast and do the first race with it. Um, and in testing, generally every 10 kilos you have um, extra in the car is worth about one and a half tenths a lap. So uh, it really does play, play havoc with the setup of the car and your race pace as well. So let's take a look now at the grid lineup for this third round of the championship. Matt Neal lines up on pole just one one thousandth faster than the heavily ballasted Vauxhall of James Thompson. Frenchman Ivan Muller is third, while Anthony Reid puts his MGZS into fourth with 18 kilos of ballast. Teammate Warren Hughes in an all new car is fifth, ahead of leading independent runner Tim Harvey. Dan Eves is teammate in a slightly lighter car, while Paul O'Neill is still looking for his first finish. Colin Turkington has put the team Atomic Kitten MG ninth ahead of the team PSP Proton of David Leslie. Then it's Andy Brio's Honda Civic, the independent Astros of Aaron Slice and Boy Wonder Tom Chilton, the other Honda of Alan Morrison and the Proton of Phil Bennett, alongside the other Atomic Kitten car of Gareth Howell. 
James Kay heads the production class by nearly one whole second in his Synchro Motorsport Honda, then it's the reigning Lotus Elise champion Mark Fullerlove alongside. Of the production class winners at Brands, Norman Simon is fourth for the start of this race, but Rob Collard had engine problems and he starts from the back of the grid. Also experiencing problems was series returnee Gavin Piper, the talented young Scotsman at the wheel of a third Gary Ailes Alfa Romeo. He starts at the back with his teammate Graham Saunders, and that means on the curve leading onto start-finish straight. A total of 29 cars set to battle it out in the sprint race, and remember, there are 15 points on offer to the winner in each class, a reward for everyone down to 10th position, and bonus points for pole position, fastest lap, and for leading a lap in the feature race. Now, Matt Neal has a two-point advantage in the series as we're all set to go with the sprint race from Alton Park. Away they go then at the start of 15 laps. A good getaway there for Matt Neal. A bad getaway indeed for James Thompson. Matt Neal on the left-hand side of the picture, getting a little bit of a nudge from Tim Harvey. Yvan Muller, the Frenchman, coming around the outside. And Anthony Reid is a fourth. And that's Thompson on the grass there as they came out of Old Hall, the first corner. Everyone seems to have got through there safely. And it's Matt Neal just ahead of Yvan Muller. Tim Harvey is battling away with Anthony Reid for third position. Reid at the MG into third place. And now it's Harvey versus Hughes for fourth position. Down towards Island Bend, the hairpin on cold tyres. Yeah, quite a demanding corner, especially on cold tyres. It's a long radius corner. They all scrabble for grip out of there, trying to get traction. So it is a, a very difficult, as you say, but on that first lap. Matt Neal has the advantage at the moment over Ivan Muller. Second place for him. Look at the two MGs. Anthony Reid under pressure from Warren Hughes as they come down towards Nickerbrook. But Reid just holding off the advances of his teammate. Tim Harvey comes through. Colin Turkington just getting a little bit out of shape. Oh, and we've got a car off. That's John B and Q off at the top of the hill. Yeah, here we see the replay. There's John B and Q. He's, they seem to sort of cross each other. There he has a huge helicopter, 360 degree spin. But the tyres did they did their job. He must be doing it. He's not a happy bunny. Definitely not. But uh, I think it was just uh, one of those racing incidents. I don't think it was uh, deliberate in any way. Steve Wood was the other driver involved in that incident. Now he's kept going. But poor John B and Q, that car's in a real state. I don't think he's going to be able to get out for the other race this afternoon. Now, Matt Neal leads them round up towards Druids. OK, Matt, um, how do you feel about uh, arranging uh, like you did for the start of the rolling start with Ivan, a point where you're going to boot it so that you can both get away, Ivan can be P2 and you can't both get stitched up? So how about the old green marshal's post on the left just as you come over the crest? So where those little bollards are. Well, as you get a clear view of the pit lane, there's a big green marshal's hut on your left-hand side. that give you both a good run before the start-finish line. Yeah, that's a very good attention to detail by the team, in a way. Matt Neal, of course, is leading the cars over the line at his pace, but Muller doesn't know when he's going to get his foot down, and now he will, of course, so make sure he doesn't get swamped by the MGs behind him. Well, there we go, on the power hard as he went past the marshal post. As organised over the radio, Matt Neal leads as the safety car comes back in again. Ivan Muller in second place. Then it's Anthony Reid and Warren Hughes in the two black and green MGs. And look at the battles going on all the way down. Look at Colin Turkington moving around on track. The youngster driving for Team Atomic Kitten Racing this weekend in the yellow MG, pushing hard. The leaders already making their way through Cascades and down towards the hairpin as Paul O'Neill comes in. Must be some sort of problem there for Paul. Yeah, I don't know what it is, it's very early in the race, but uh, there's no smoke from the engine, so uh, we know that the Vauxhalls have had a few engine problems in these first two uh, meetings, but uh, maybe it's a transmission problem looking at the way the, uh, they're just uh, trying to change gear. Race leader, look at this battle for third, that's Warren Hughes getting down the inside of his experienced teammate Anthony Reid. Reid's car carrying 18 kilos of ballast. Oh, and Dan Eves is off, that's up at Lodge. Yeah, here we are on board with David Leslie, who's following this uh, incident, and there, Danny just loses it. He does turn in a bit late, but normally you have understeer there and not oversteer, so maybe he's got some sort of mechanical problem. Well, David Leslie was able to get past Colin Turkington, who was held up a little. Race leader Matt Neal looking to try and repeat the victory he had at Brands Hatch. Ivan Muller still right behind him. Then it's Warren Hughes, Anthony Reid, Tim Harvey in the bright orange Peugeot. And look at James Thompson right behind them. Made a bad getaway initially, but he's beginning to challenge this little gaggle of cars. OK, Matt, bad news. You've 
we've had a drive through penalty for creeping on the start. I suggest we take it now, get it out of the way in case it's a safety car. That's our race leader being told he's got a penalty now. Fair enough. Oh. Yeah, we've tried to hang in it, but it's the original start. Let's get it done now. Well, Paul McNeil, he's into the pits immediately and he's got to go through on the speed limiter. Disappointing or what, Will? Yeah, a big time disappointment, but because it was his own mistake off the start. We thought he jumped it, maybe he was out of position, I don't know. But he's now just got to get his head down. He's got to use that anger and channel it and just just try just trying to gain something extra out of his out of his car. Now he's rejoined right behind Tom Chilton and Alan Morrison. Look at these two having their own little battle. And Matt Neal now trying to dive in there himself. He's got down the inside of Tom Chilton, so he gains one position, but this will only just get him back into the top ten. Back up front, Ivan Muller has set the fastest lap. He is our race leader. Second place now for Warren Hughes here in the MG. Anthony Reid, oh, he locked up a bit there coming into Nickerbrook, and that's put him under pressure from Tim Harvey. Yeah, Anthony Reid there, I think he just got too much rear brake. Clearly, he locked the rear brakes, got the car well out of shape, and now he's having to defend furiously. A bit of, bit of that rear bumper there coming off the MG. Obviously, Harvey giving it the full treatment on the back. Paul O'Neill, it's all over for him in this race. That's three non-finishes in a row at the beginning of the season. Great disappointment for the Merseysider. Meanwhile, back on the track, and look at Tim Harvey now beginning to attack Anthony Reid into Lodge Corner. Oh, and Tim gets a bit out of shape this time. Well, that's allowed Thompson to get past him. And Tim Harvey certainly got into a bit of a slide through that right-hander. Let's take a look. Yeah, here we are on board with Harvey. Clearly, he makes a big move down the inside of Reed there, but uh, just leaves his braking a bit too late, gets out of shape, just like Reed did into the Nickerbrook chicane before, thus allowing Thompson to nip through on the inside. Now, this is the battle for second in the production class. Norman Simon in the BMW had a win at Brands, remember? We're on board with him in that BMW. Watch out for Mark Fuller Love in the Peugeot. They had contact last time out. Try and keep it clean, boys. Fuller Love's through in second position, and that's good clean racing this time. Remember, James Kay is leading the production class as the battle continues. Thompson now attacking Anthony Reid for third position. Across the line they come then. Anthony just trying to fend off that Vauxhall Astro behind him, but Thompson's dived down the inside. Yeah, that was a great move. He sort of suckered Reed into that. He didn't give any indication that he was going to go for the inside. He kept well back. The last moment, he moved across and dived down the inside. But the, the fight is still on as they dive into Cascades. That's two old pros really having a good dice. There's not many people you can trust with uh, going side by side through Cascades. That was great racing. James Thompson takes third. There is our production class leader, James Kay, dominating that class in the Honda Civic Type R. And they had that car only just built in time for Brands, had their problems there, but he's out in front here at Alton Park. Now then, race leader Ivan Muller, yet to win a race in the British Touring Car Championship yet this year. He led at Brands, remember, had a puncture. Second place for Warren Hughes in the MG. James Thompson now in third, then the other MG of Anthony Reid in fourth position. Then it's Tim Harvey in the Peugeot. David Leslie is going well in the Proton, and that's where Matt Neal's got to. That's the battle for sixth place, so that drive-through penalty, he's now trying to make up for it and attacking the Scotsman, David Leslie, in the Proton Impian. Up towards Druid's very fast section of track. Yeah, a very dangerous one as well. You certainly don't want to go up there. It's blind, it's the double apex uh, right-hander, but it's a very important corner because you can carry, if the car's good, you can carry a lot of speed, which is exactly what we're seeing from Matt Neal as he gets up the inside of David Leslie into Lodge. So Matt Neal's on a recovery drive once again here, but he must still be fuming inside that cockpit after having to make the drive-through penalty. He could have won this race with this sort of pace he's showing, and now he's chasing after Tim Harvey. Matt into sixth position. But his main championship rival, Ivan Muller, who he tied with on points after Brands, is leading this race and looking well set. And that's Colin Turkington in trouble in the yellow MG. That's one of the Team Atomic Kitten cars slowing down. So he's obviously got a problem. Let's see what happened. Yeah, here we see the two cars going side by side into Nickerbrook. And there, Turkington seems to move across. He hasn't got clear air in front of Tim Harvey and therefore gets the car nudged by Tim Harvey. It wasn't Harvey's fault, I don't think. And he gets pushed into the barriers. Riding on board with Matt Neal. Now he's attacking for fifth position. And that's Tim Harvey right ahead of us through the double apex of Druid. Under the bridge, heading towards Lodge Corner. Tight right-hander coming up. Can he break later than Tim? Tries to go down the inside. 
Squeeze his pass there on the inside. Just about makes it. Nice clean overtake. A quick thank you to Tim behind him. And Matt now up into fifth position. And Tim back down into sixth place. Meanwhile, look at this battle. Aaron Slight, the ex-Superbike star, who switched to car racing full-time now, chasing David Leslie in the Proton. And then right behind him, he's got the little Honda of Andy Prio. So another great battle that's going on. One independent in the middle of two factory cars. Yes, and those two factory cars, of course, got a lot to prove. They're very new, lots, no testing mileage at all. Uh, and Tim Harvey here into the pits. Uh, looks like a retirement. That's a great shame. He's been going very well in this race. Yeah, pity for Team Halford, as Tim brings the car in. There'll be another race later to try and score some points. Meanwhile, look at this battle for fourth place now. Anthony Reid versus Matt Neal. And Matt Neal now trying to go down the inside into Old Hall Corner. But he makes it look so easy, Will. It does, but we do know the box, of course, at this stage of the season is the strongest car. Obviously, MG have made some big improvements since last year. And it, here we are on board with Davis Leslie through the chicanes and uh, wildly over those curves and he runs wide, he runs wide. That's where I had one of my biggest ever accidents. That's not a place to run wide. Oh, and he's got Aaron Slight right alongside him now. Andy Prio just behind in the Honda and that's allowed the ex-biker to go through. Here is the other battle that's going on up front though. Muller is race leader, second place the MG and third place Thompson. So they've all closed up together a bit. And as we're getting to the latter stages of this race, you can see that Warren Hughes in that MG in second place is coming under increasing pressure from James Thompson, who wants to get into second and chase after his teammate. Yeah, something's happened there because clearly Muller had a bit more of a lead before, so he's obviously either got a problem or been held up, allowing the other two to catch up on him. Up towards Druids. This will be their last run through this section of track. Can Hughes hold on to second position? It'll be a great result for him and for MG. This car was only just finished off in time for this weekend, all completely new. And look at this, Thompson surely going to try around the outside into the final corner. Oh, he squeezed out, but he can't quite make it. Warren Hughes, there's a little puff of smoke, but he's still in second. Ivan Muller comes through to take the win. Warren holds on to take second position, and James Thompson has to settle for third place. But a hard-fought contest, that one. Ivan Muller taking his first victory of the season. Those MGs proving their worth once again. Now, there's still a battle going on out there. Look at this, David Leslie and Andy Prio cross the line absolutely together, although Prio just got it. So that means he took seventh on the line. And looking back, we can see the production class winner coming through. That is James Kay in the more standard Honda Civic Type R. Good win for him and for Synchro Motorsport. So, 15 points to Ivan Muller, while Warren Hughes scores his best BTCC result to date, ahead of James Thompson. Neil recovered to fourth and set fastest lap. Aaron Slight was the first independent car home in sixth, and Gareth Howell finished his first race in a tour in ninth. James Kay easily won the production class, beating Mark Fuller Love's Peugeot by eight seconds. Congratulations on your win. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's good because after the unlucky uh, meeting I had at Bronzach, uh, that gave a bit more uh, confidence. So I'm happy, I make a good start and then uh, I try to control the race, uh, but the two last lap was very tough. Tell us about this drive through penalty that you, you had. Um, pretty cheesed off, to be honest. It's, I've got it for being... They made, I got the immediate message that it was creepy on the grid, but it wasn't. It was being misaligned on the grid, and I was, my car was positioned too far left. I voiced my differences with the officials about it because um, it's OK for me up on the grid, you know, um, when all the personnel are there. But you come to some of these circuits, and all it's got lines for different heaps of different racing. And uh, there's more lines on that grid than a Chinese phone book. You know, and they're all rubbed out. And they've said I should line up on a dot, a red dot, which is about the size of a two-pence piece. And I've said to the officials, I'll take them back, sit them in a car, and they can pick that red dot out at 20 yards back. So I'm, um, the problem is, it's history, and what's done, done, you can't turn the clock back. So a very happy Ivan Muller here. And coming up, we throw the spotlight on Honda, a company that is used to success, but it's up against it with the undeveloped Civic Type R. Honda is a manufacturer with a very strong motor racing heritage and after a touring car absence of a year, they're back with a Civic Type R. How 
do you go about setting up a touring car racing team from scratch? The uh, best way is to go and find a compliant manufacturer. And if you can find someone as helpful as Honda, it's a whole bunch easier. Honda races more things than anybody else worldwide. Uh, whatever it is, we'll race it. And we do that to learn from an engineering point of view, we do that to learn from a management point of view, and we do it because we enjoy it. Um, so for us, it's kind of in the blood, and uh, it's something that links very, very directly to developing our engineers, to developing the cars that, at the end of the day, people buy. Contrary to people looking at it and thinking, well, it's a straight-through exhaust and some wide wheels, no, there is an awful lot of work. We take the car totally apart, stiffen the shell, redesign the suspension to make sure that we can optimise all of the bits that we're allowed to within the regulations. That's why the base car is so important. Space of time is a miracle, to be honest. And you know, at Brands, we were very competitive in the second race, and I hope that we can move on from there. But I would say that we're still working on that right now. Yeah, it's been exciting so far. Obviously, you know, we've been thrown into the deep end, really. Um, with limited testing, what we've got so far, you know, we're making steps forward, but obviously, you know, we're doing most of our testing at the race. You know, I think by sort of the next few races on, we'll have the car well sorted out. Are you spending millions on the Touring Car Championship? There'd be six no. As one of the slowest corners in the country, this hairpin. Now, the leading drivers will be approaching the bend in sixth gear, so they'll have to brake really hard to scrub off the speed and get down into first. If they make a lunge down the inside, then they will compromise their exit line and exit speed. One thing is for sure, though, there will be some entertaining moves here. The feature race, round four of the Green Flag MSA British Touring Car Championship, sees Matt Neal starting from pole position again, this time for a rolling start. Alongside him, Ivan Muller has maximum ballast. On the second row, Warren Hughes' car is much heavier than it was, but Paul O'Neill's car is running light. James Thompson will hope for a better first lap, whilst Anthony Reid is alongside him in sixth place. 20-year-old Colin Turkington alongside 48-year-old David Leslie in the Proton, and his adversary from the first race, Andy Prio, just behind with Aaron Slides alongside. Rygate's Tom Chilton has the other Arena Motorsport Honda of Alan Morrison next to him on the grid. Then it's Tim Harvey who had electrical problems in qualifying. Gareth Howell who didn't set a representative time. And Dan Eves whose car failed the right height test after the session. He's joined on row eight by the leading production class car, James Kay. Once again outstanding, but now carrying 42 kilos of ballast. Mark Fullerlove carries 30 kilos and starts from row nine, while Spencer Marsh is ballast free. Annie Templeton gained over two seconds between qualifying sessions and starts fifth in class. But watch out for the rapid trio of Alfa Romeos that have to start from the back of the grid. There's an awful lot of cars to squeeze into the first corner at Old Hall. So the car's heading round behind the safety car. Matt Neal will determine the pace of this rolling start. And remember, he's only got nine kilos of success ballast on his car. He finished fourth in the last race. But Ivan Muller alongside him with a full 42 kilos. Might be a bit harder to get off the line. But it is a rolling start. Bit of momentum might help his cause. We're getting all set for the start of 25 laps here. The feature race at Alton Park. And it's a good start for Matt Neal. Gets away cleanly. Ivan Muller just slotting into second place. He'll try and protect that position from the MG in third position. That's Warren Hughes. He gets through the first corner safely. Paul O'Neill slots in behind him. So we've got the MGs up there once again, but Vauxhall, Vauxhall, one, two, and then another Vauxhall in fourth place. Oh, and we've got a problem at the back there. That looks like Gavin Piper's car involved in some sort of incident coming out of Old Hall. We'll take another look at that. Meanwhile, James Thompson gets past Anthony Reid on the Exeter Cascades, the run down to Ireland hairpin, and that brings him up into fifth position. Matt Neal is our race leader. Gavin Piper's out of his car, says, what happened? Yeah, well, here we see the, it's Annie uh, Templeton and I think uh, Mark Thomas seem to make a contact there. And then Mark Thomas spears across the track to the right and collects poor old Gavin Piper. And here we see it again. 
from the rear. And there goes Mark Thomas. He collects uh, Gavin Piper, and off Gavin Piper goes. So he just uses Gavin Piper as a cushion. So yet again, we lose a production car on the first lap. Great change for Gavin Piper, who's made his appearance here at Alton Park for Gary Ells Motorsport. Let's get back to the leaders, though. All the way through Druid's corner, it's still Matt Neal under pressure from Ivan Muller. Oh, and in fact, Matt's the one who locks up the wheel under braking. Look at James Thompson. Gets past Paul O'Neill quite easily into Lodge Corner and up the hill. So that brings him up into fourth position now. Across the line, and it's Matt Neal, our race leader, trying his best to fend off the man who was runner-up in last year's championship, Ivan Muller. Out of that corner comes Warren Hughes in third place. You can see one or two running wide. That was Colin Turkerton. Free play here. And here we see we're on board with James Thompson just going in inside there into Lodge Corner. Really a very easy move. O'Neill didn't fight it. He knows that Thompson's uh, going to push hard. He's quicker than him, more experienced than him. He's far better off sitting on his tail and learning from James Thompson. Matt Neal is Paul O'Neill's teammate, and Matt's the one who's leading currently here with Ivan Muller in second. Little bit of battling going on. That's Andy Prio just trying to move out of line, trying to attack Colin Turkington. And there's the other Honda in trouble. That's Alan Morrison locking up the brakes. Well, but he looks as though he survived. Yeah, I think he's going back to his motocrossing routes there, going across the grass. He's very good on the grass, of course. Uh, and here we see it. I just think he gets on the brakes too late. He's got too much rear braking, really. And it locks the rears and just unsettles the car. And he does a pretty good recovery there. And uh, I don't think he gains any places by it, so I doubt he'll get a penalty. Well, we'll wait and see. He's passed by Tom Chilton, the 17-year-old wonder boy who had such a good outing at Brands Hatch. Not quite so much on the pace here this weekend. Meanwhile, our race leader, Matt Neal, Ivan Muller. Now, look at James Thompson. Gets down into third position, passing Warren Hughes. You know, that's one of his favourite places there, Will. Down the inside into Old Hall. Yes, he did that in the last race, and he, and he moves very late, which is just the right thing to do. If you just tell the driver in front, if he can see you moving across to the right, then the line can get blocked. But James does it very late, and therefore just jumps on his prey. Danny versus Gareth Howell and Aaron Slight here. Now, Gareth Howell in his first outing in the touring class, remember, this weekend, just trying to gain experience. There's Tim Harvey. He had to start at the back of the touring class, and he's making up ground already. They had those problems in qualifying, the electrical problem that put him to the back of the grid. Slippery surface flag being shown, so they've got to be a little bit careful down here. But at the moment, he's trying to chase Andy Prio as leader of the production class. James Kay comes through the Knickerbrook chicane, the auctionman once again dominating that class. Back to the leaders, and you can see that James Thompson in third trying to catch the top two, and then Warren Hughes is having to defend now quite a lot from Paul O'Neill. Oh, and Colin Turkington's off the road, and it looks as though he's got uh, a puncture there. Now we're on board with Warren Hughes being attacked for third place by Paul O'Neill. Yes, just listen to that wonderful V6 of the MG. But uh, O'Neill there carrying a lot more speed out of Druids, what we were talking about earlier. And can he, can he make it stick by carrying that speed into Lodge Corner? And we know the Vauxhall is very good on the brakes. Yes, he can. He gets down the inside. The car looks very stable. And it's a very nice, clean move. So it's a Vauxhall Astral 1, 2, 3 at the moment. So, or is it? Because Warren, oh, Warren Hughes is coming into the pits. Now, this is the first of the pit stops. Ivan Muller actually in already the obligatory pit stops that have to be made anytime after lap five and Ivan Muller gets a clean stop underway gets out again and Muller now has made his pit stop that means that James Thompson is second behind Matt Neal and here's third place man Paul O'Neill just behind him is the car of Warren Hughes and then of course the proton of David Leslie then it's Andy Prio in the Honda and right behind him is Tim Harvey in the Peugeot on board with Matt Neal. Now, he's coming in for his obligatory pit stop from the race lead, remember? Crucial stop, this one. They've got to get it right. He comes in. Oh, what's he doing? He's in the Honda pit. Don't be there, Matt. That's your pit. What are you doing? Well, finally, he gets into the right place. Oh, you can see inside. Look at him. He's, he knows he's made a big mistake here. Yeah, that's quite easy to do in a way. You come in, you're very sort of in some subconscious mode as you come in. But I think the red of the Honda, it was the same color as his old team, Team Dynamics. And I guess that just subconscious thought, you think, I've got to stop here. But it's a big mistake. You'll probably get a drive-through penalty for that. Anthony Reed's made his stop. Meanwhile, there's a battle going on for second in the production class. Norman Simon, we're with him. Ooh, and he locks up, <laughs> nearly hits the back of Mark Fuller-Love. Yeah, he was all hands and elbows there and no gears, but he managed to recover it, nearly went off the track and probably would have collected the barrier, but lost another place because of it. Yeah, that was Spencer Marsh who's moved up one, but here's Matt Neal, and so frustrated after making that mistake in the pit lane a moment ago. OK, with Matt, we're stopping in the wrong pit. I'm afraid we've got a drive through pit.
Well, it's going to be his second drive-through penalty of the day. He had to do it in the sprint race now. James Thompson comes in from the lead of this race. He now comes in for his pit stop. And I wonder if he'll be able to get back out ahead of Muller, who's already made his, but it's a bit slow. Yeah, they, they dropped the wheel nut there, and that, uh, it was a 9.24 second stop. That is slow. It's at least two seconds slower than it should have been. I just see the way the wheel spun. just shows you had no temperature at all in those tyres. Matt Neal making his drive-through penalty. It's a frustrating day for him. I'm not racing like these for myself today, am I? No worries, so just keep your mind on the job, focus against the black line too. So back on the power, coming out of the pits, trying to get past Tim Harvey. Tim seemed to have a little bit of a problem at the stop there, but they've got him out now. And in fact, Matt Neal's able to get past him on the run down towards Cascades straight away. That means that his teammate, Paul O'Neill, is now our race leader. Ivan Muller is in second effectively with James Thompson behind him. So that pit stop, a little longer for Thompson as we saw. It means that this time, unlike Brands, he wasn't able to get out in front of his teammate in the production class. James Kay still dominating proceedings, quite a long way ahead of the battle that we saw a little while ago, going on for second place with Spencer Marsh holding on to that second position at the moment. The two MGs running together. That's Anthony Reid just ahead of Warren Hughes after their pit stops, but uh, just coming over the top of the hill there, it looks like Warren's got a good run on Anthony. In fact, Anthony's not even challenging him as they come down the hill. Looks as though he might have some sort of problem Warren Hughes comes through Nickerbrook safely. Let's watch because right behind them we've got Matt Neal as they climb up Clay Hill towards the Druid's right-hander. Anthony doesn't seem to be pulling that well, does he? Well, I think there is some kind of problem. Yeah, you certainly don't pull over and let your teammate pass. Uh, teammates are the uh, fiercest competitors. The last thing you want to do is uh, get, let your teammate in front unless you have to. So I think you're right. He's clearly got some sort of technical problem. Great shame for Anthony Reid. He was third in the championship coming to this event at Alton Park, but uh, if he doesn't score well in this race, obviously going to drop down the order somewhat. Matt Neal determined to make up for some of the lost ground. He's getting a bit used to this, isn't he? Trying to play catch-up, and he's got to try and find a way past the Geordie Warren Hughes. He is not an easy driver to overtake. No, he isn't. Warren, of course, has had many years of experience in Formula 3 and Formula 3000 uh, more recently. And uh, But uh, Matt, of course, has got a quick car. There's uh, Anthony Reid, as we thought, retiring with some sort of problem. Yeah, that's disappointing for the Scots. Oh, and Andy Prio's out of the race as well, the Guernseyman. Oh, look at this battle going on. Matt Neal now trying to get past Warren Hughes. Oh, he's hit him. Oh, into the barrier down at Nickerbrook and swings round, rips off the front of the car. Now, that was a pretty hefty impact, I think, and it looks as though today a horrible day as it's turned out for Matt Neal. Could be all over. Yeah, here we see Matt Neal on board, camera, really close behind Hughes in the MG. He just, just misses his braking point. Hughes brakes earlier than the box. We know the boxer can brake late. Plus, being so close in that slipstream, he will lose some downforce uh, effect, and therefore it will uh, affect the efficiency of his braking. Into the pits comes our race leader, Paul O'Neill, making a later stop than just about every other front runner in this race so far. And Paul just looking for his first finish of the season. He's had such a disastrous time this year. They're putting those two front tyres on. Looks as though that was smooth and clean. And he gets away well. Now, this should get him back out in third place. Just seen Muller and Thompson go through. There is Muller, in fact. There is James Thompson in second place. So Paul O'Neill will rejoin in third place. It's a Vauxhall Astra 1-2-3 currently. And there we can see Paul O'Neill, he's rejoined just ahead, in fact, of the MG of Warren Hughes. Well, Warren still pushing, never gives up. And this uh, brand new car that they've built for this weekend seems to be running well, but not running so well. Oh dear, that's James Kay after dominating in the production class. That looks terminal. He's, oh, and that's Thompson. Thompson's got a left front puncture from second position. James Thompson is out of this race. That's extraordinary, that really is. That's uh, very unlucky. Left front, of course, is the hardest tire to get back to the pits with because you're loading that left front all the way. So going around all those right-hand corners is going to be a real struggle. So Ivan Muller now out in front through, ca through Cascades. That's, there's something strange there. Look, he's weird. there was a, uh, it sounded like he cut out for a moment. Yeah, definitely. Muller has got a problem as well. This is the most extraordinary race. I think we saw Anil go past there. So Anil now has taken the lead. This yeah. is the most incredible race. That's Paul O'Neill in front. You're right, Well, Paul O'Neill, the 22-year-old Merseysider, 
who's in touring class for the first time this year. You know, he's only been racing for a couple of years, but he's in front now. I sure he can't believe it. And in fact, the fans down here at Nickerbrook, all locals here at this racetrack, and he's a local lad as well from Liverpool. Huge cheer for him. Spencer Marsh coming through, leading in the production class. Look at this battle, Warren Hughes versus Tim Harvey. That's for second in the Tourers. Yeah, and don't forget, Tim Harvey came from the back of the grid, so he's had a great race. And there's the uh, MG crew looking very uh, serious. But uh, on board here with Warren Hughes, just got the in inside there but of Harvey, but uh, it looks like Harvey's gonna go round the outside before Old Hall. Oh, yes, indeed he does. Warren tries to protect it, and the uh, Team Halfords crew getting very excited as Tim Harvey moves into second position. And you're right, that's a great drive from the back of the Tourers grid. He started on the seventh row of the grid, and he's come up to second place. But there is our race leader, Paul O'Neill, out in front of that battle that's going on for second between the Peugeot and the MG. Ivan Muller's dropped right out of it now, the car cutting out all over the place. So Muller is not going to score well in the second race after the day, after finishing first in the opener, the sprint race. Look at this for Warren Hughes, though. It's been a great run for MG today. Twice he'll end up on the podium, and despite just being outpaced by Tim Harvey, I think he's going to be very, very happy about that. Up front, Paul O'Neill, well, you have to say it's been a star drive. Yeah, he's kept his nose clean, he's kept out of trouble, and therefore, with a double whammy for the two works voxels, he's ended up in first place, a great drive. O'Neill wins at Alton. Yes! Yes! Oh, we won! <laughs> well done, thank you! Oh, well, very pleased. Fourth place, that's a good performance there for David Leslie in the Proton. He'll be pleased about that, a car that hasn't had much development yet. And Gareth Howell getting his first uh, good point-scoring finish in the Touring class. And there's the winner in the production class coming through. Spencer Marshall battle for second. Oh, and it's just Jim Edwards Jr. who naps it on the line from Norman Simon in the BMW. Great battle all the way to the line there. But delight for the export team. The first ever car racing victory for Paul O'Neill and he's still shouting about it on the radio he's still going crazy out there and getting a huge amount of applause from the fans at Alton Park stay with us we'll hear from him in just a moment time warehouse worker and now British touring car race winner and he's won at his local track Alton Park it's the first big win of his career and it's fact it's his first ever win in any kind of car race Warren Hughes taking second place in the end after Tim Harvey was given a 25 second penalty for not changing both wheels in the pit stop a seized wheel nut was the cause that put Leslie into third Gareth Howell fourth as top independent Thompson recovered to seventh Muller in tenth and the production class went to Warwickshire lad Spencer Marsh in his Honda Accord. Jim Edwards Jr. just snatched the decision for second place, but it's Norman Simon who will have the slight advantage in the points after finishing third. How do you feel? Oh! Don't know. It's superb. I don't believe it. No, I'm so I happy. Wanna, just want to dedicate it to uh, all my family who've been through a bit of our time the past few years with uh, that in the family. To them. Yeah, that's superb. Couldn't Absolutely awesome. I was, I mean, I was helped along the way, but I mean, I've got to thank Alex and Marvin, everyone, just everyone, the Chris, Nick, everyone. I, I just did a fantastic job. We went out there. I just wanted to finish the race, and I've won it. I, that is, when I see Muller uh, breaking down, I thought I was. I really radioed in and said, "Shall I pass Muller? Or shall I wait behind him? He's doing about 20 mile an hour. What am I going to do? Is it going to wait behind him?" I just didn't look at my pit box, it said P1, I knew it did, so I just let it go. But I can't believe it. I was doing about 12 miles an hour on the last lap, and then it went <laughs> off about three times. What was what was the penalty for this time? Uh, st st driving through someone else's <laughs> pit bay. Because I'm just, I suppose I'm so used to, I've been years with Team Dynamics and they're always red. And then um, the Vauxhall team is red. And uh, I just came in red. <laughs> There we go, we're in. And um, then I saw Honda written across his chest. Oh, Christ. A nice win, basically. I did, yeah, I didn't expect it at all. Um, the Civic seemed to be well up front, and then suddenly he just started losing power, and uh, I managed to overtake. Uh, it just goes to show that uh, the Accord's not uh, 
down and out completely, it's still competitive. We lost second gear on the uh, second lap, and then we lost fourth gear about six laps in. But we were still pulling away, so I was really, you know, I thought, this car's fantastic. Then we had a, a little bit of a problem with the fuel pump, which uh, eventually stopped the engine. In the Drivers' Championship, Ivan Muller leads Matt Neal by four points, with fellow Vauxhall driver Thompson third, and the two MGs of Hughes and Reed fourth and fifth. Norman Simon leads the production class, but Brands Hatch feature race winner Rob Collard failed to get going at all with engine problems. Alton Park was deeply frustrating for him. Vauxhall Motorsport leads the team's championship by nine points from MG Sport and Export tied on 23, while Vauxhall continues to run away with the Manufacturers' Championship, but Honda nips ahead of Proton by one point. At every event of the British Touring Car Championship, we hand out our Driver of the Day award, and this week it goes to a man who was on the podium in both races for MG, Warren Hughes. Warren, congratulations. Thank you a very much. A bottle of champagne to celebrate nice your surprise. performance today. You must be delighted with how it went. Absolutely. Um, you know, I have to first of all pay tribute to uh, MG and WSR, the team who run uh, the MG ZS, because that car was brand new, it hadn't turned a wheel before the start of this weekend. And to get two podiums, I mean, that is just superb. Um, so yeah, brilliant. But you had to fight for it, didn't you? I mean, you had some massive dices with some other cars in those races. Yeah, it's, uh, oh, it's made me rem remember how to race again. It's been, uh, it's been a while since I had dices like that, but it's, yeah, I have to compliment Tim. He was absolutely fair, uh, but I had nothing left. I mean, I was on maximum, almost maximum ballast, and Tim was, was the minimum weight, so uh, it was a little bit one-sided. But uh, I tried my best, but I, that was it. That was as, as, as much as I could do, but a superb weekend all round. Great, Warren Hughes, well done. Our driver of the day at Alton Park. Thank you. Cheers. Every programme, we're offering you the chance to win a priceless prize. And this week, Green Flag are giving away four VIP tickets to a touring car race and a ride around the track in the safety car. And if you're really lucky, they'll turn the lights on. So, if you fancy your chances, here's the qualifying question. Who recently became the youngest ever British touring car driver to take a top three finish? Was it A, David Leslie, B, James Thompson, or C, Tom Chilton? The number to call is 0906 911 0210. That's 0906 911 0210. Best of luck. From Parkland in Cheshire, the touring cars travel to an airfield in Hampshire. Thruxton features some very fast flowing corners, interrupted by a chicane and a complex where late braking is the order of the day. The MGs were fast in testing. This could be their opportunity to shine. There's more at tokatour.com. Well, another mixed bag here at Alton. Matt Neal started today as championship leader. He had two poles, but he only managed a fourth place. But his teammate, Paul O'Neill, well, he had one of the most emotional wins I think I've ever seen. That was a fantastic result for him yeah. and for the team. For Ivan Muller, it started out well today. He won the sprint race, and he looked like he was going to win the feature race as well. But then problems meant that he had to pull out of it. Paul O'Neill came through for the win. But what made me happy particularly was three different manufacturers on the podium of that feature race. And that bodes well for the British Touring Car Championship. Yeah, and it certainly bodes well for rounds five and six at Thruxton in a couple of weeks' time. We shall see you there. Goodbye. Now, all you landlubbers, don't go away. There's more thrilling race action just around the corner. This time on the high seas, the Volvo Ocean Race is next. <laughs>